Ooh, okay, let's get to this next episode. Let's go, baby. Can he do two in one? Okay, moving on to the next episode. I do want to mention really quick, there was a news item I forgot to talk about earlier about Andy Cohen uh, being asked to leave Bravo and there was like a, you know, a, a com compensation package being put together uh, that was later called BS on by Andy's reps. But yeah, I mean, I saw that and I, I think there is a real conversation to be had about what does happen to Bravo when Andy Cohen does decide to leave. But I think when he leaves, it is going to be of his own accord unless more and more and more things come out. Um, but to me, that that news item that came out today, I, I, I could almost see that coming in from Frankel's camp. Um, it just, it didn't make tons of sense. And to me, uh, you know, I personally, I, I love Andy Cohen dearly. I would be so sad if he had, when he leaves the network for me, it'll be like when Letterman left or when Stern leaves, it's, it's one of those things that he is so integral to the brand. And, you know, I, I've thought about like, oh, who could replace Andy Cohen? And in some ways he's irreplaceable just because he's in the DNA of Bravo. He's been there from the very beginning. He helped create this whole thing. How many people out there have created a whole genre, have created, you know, it, it, it's Real Housewives is a worldwide brand. Uh, you know, it's in the lexicon. There's only so many people that have been involved in something that is is new in a sense. And, and continues on. And I would be very, very sad. And I just don't think he's going to be forced out. I could be completely wrong, but to me, that just smelled like a complete bullshit story from the, but I did think about replacements. I mean, listen, you know, somebody was saying Kate Chastain. I mean, it was just, it's just hard to even talk about because it just, it, it would have to be a completely different thing. I can't imagine watch what happens live. Um, I also maybe like there could be, you know, if when, when, and if it does have, when it, it's going to eventually happen at some point, he's going to retire. And then I'm like, maybe it needs to be multiple people. Maybe it's not just one person anymore because that would just be insane of just kind of turning over the, it's like Lauren Michaels from Saturday night live in some ways. And Lauren Michaels, you know, the rumor is that Tina Fey is eventually going to take over for him after SNL's 50th season, which I think they're at like season 48 right now. Um, and what I hear is that he's going to retire after that. And I would love to see Tina Fey take over for Lauren and kind of bring SNL into a new era. Um, but Andy Cohen to me is a lot like that, that it is so tied to him that I think he is just one of the biggest, you know, he's, he's just as big of a draw as, as the, the shows in some ways, but yeah, Kate Chastain. I mean, she, Kate Chastain is amazing. Danny Pellegrino, uh, also amazing. I've heard his name thrown out there a bunch, you know, and also a different vibe than Andy as well, which I think that's what you would need is something completely different. I was telling the Patreon today that I was like, I thought I saw Matt Rogers on an episode of watch what happens live a while back. And I thought, Oh, he has a really great energy. I mean, I don't know if people are out there rolling their eyes, but I thought Matt Rogers could be a possible good. Then I just got thinking of like how many, you know, cause it's gotta be, it's gotta be a woman or a gay man. It's gotta be like, I feel like that is just hands down what it has to be. And, uh, so I don't know, but I was thinking about that. I was, uh, I, I really was thinking about that and it made me so sad. Cause I was like, Oh man, I think to me, it's just, that's, that's a part of it. And sometimes I do get frustrated with Andy at reunions and stuff, but that's, that's part of loving a sports team. You know, you're like, Oh, that's not the play to make. This is the play to make. So anyways, I just wanted to mention that, uh, I am aware of that. Also, I wanted to, uh, announce that the Valley theme song, uh, last time I told you, I don't like the theme song. I still don't like it, but it's growing on me. There's some sort of, sort of like Huey Lewis nature to it. Like, Everything is all right. Maybe not Huey Lewis. Maybe like, everything is all right. All right. It's going to be all right. I don't know. There's like this. I'm all right. Everything is all right. And everything is all right. Ugh. I don't know. <laughs> it makes me sad to be in the valley if this song was playing. All right. I, I want it like. Vanderpump rules. I, don't know, I, I gotta st stop comparing it. Anyways, there's like, like kind of fun music to start. We're going to rock it. You know, baby, I still got it. Jax and Brittany, we over there. And Jax is like, what time are we leaving? Are we waiting for Janet? What are, what are you waiting for? And, and Brittany lets us know that there's going to be a girl's night, not a guy's night. Like DJ James Kennedy loves a girl's night. And she is wearing this purple number and her bosoms are just out. 
it's like a, a purple bikini top and this like shirt that's open. It's like a whole purple number. And Jax is on his phone, kind of like, when the hell are you? When is Janet getting out here to take you to Malibu? Come on, get out of here. I got, got I got to go blow leaves in the backyard. Come on, I've got man stuff to do. And uh, so they're going to a big house, ha- a big house on the water, Jax. The current Miss USA had it. And we meet Morgan, Nia's friend in a flashback. And Nia just looks like, just Nia's like holding a baby, just looking angelic. And she's offered this house. And she's like, so Nia invited Jasmine, Kirsten, Janet. And why not take advantage of that? Go have fun. And he's like, I guess everybody's good right now. For what I'm hearing, everybody's at a point we can hopefully move on. Christian will be there. Fingers crossed, Jax. And Jax is like, ugh. He's like, well, I'm going to have a guy's pool day. We cut over to Jesse and Michelle's house. And Michelle goes, look at my Harry Styles Converse. And he goes, yeah, amazing. And then she goes, I'm not good at packing. I think you're fine. Like, you can just feel the lack of eroticism. We are a long way off from pulling jean shorts off with this couple. We dance on over to Kristen and Luke uh, eating. And Luke's like, your boot, you hate. Your Luke goes, your boot. <laughs> Luke goes, <laughs> Luke goes, your boobs. <laughs> Your boobies look amazing. <laughs> These guys, like, it's like, I feel dirty watching them. I literally feel like I was a kid watching the Skinamax film. Like, back in the day, kids, there would be this thing where it would, like, we we couldn't afford, like, you know, the the pay cut. Well, I, don't, I just don't think they wanted us to have them. But, like, Cinemax, back in the day, you would have, like, a cable box, and you could, like, kind of see the movie. But, like, Skinamax, you would be able to see, like, a like a boob. But like half the boob would be on the top right of the screen and the, the bottom left would be a half a boob. But if you're like 13, 12 years old, you know, you and your guy friends are like, oh, my God, it's a boob. Oh, my God. But that's what Luke reminds me of me at like 12. He's like, uh, your boobs look good right now. And <laughs> Dodie, Dodie looks like like stone. She's like, uh, last night was amazing. He's like, yeah, yeah. Fuck fest. And he's like, we didn't even, we didn't, we didn't even make it to the bedroom. I'm going to get, and then we flash back to, we actually do flash back, back to that damn massage table. And Kristen's like, wouldn't it be so cool if that was when we conceived and everybody's fingers crossing? Uh, you listen, I want the best for them. Uh, anyways, we flash back to, to Brittany's Jax is already outside with the leaf mower. He's blowing leaves and you know, Jax is out there doing man stuff. The producer goes, do you have an obsession with uh, your leaf blower? And Jackson goes, <laughs> why does everybody say that? No, yeah, I mean, I'm not just saying it's once a day. It's multiple, like seven days a week. My neighbors fucking hate that thing. And we see him, you know, putting like the toys like away. He's really organizing everything. I do think it's funny that the men and their toys, like uh, Jax has a leaf blower and Sandoval has his dick flute, you know? <laughs> and by the way, it is better that he's blowing leaves than blowing other lines of an illegal substance. You know what I'm saying? But I like Jax is like, I'm a man. I do manly things. Everything has to have its place. Everything has to look clean at all times. You guys use every dish in the house to make the cake. Jesus. He's like plunging the sink. And when people have over, it all goes to shit. All a good old Jax Taylor's work goes to shit. I'm the one always dealing with the cleaning every time that Brittany is a pig. Cruz is running around and Brittany's like, are you excited for a night without me? And he goes, you should go out with your girlfriends. You need to go out. And she goes, you say that, but you get mad whenever I get home. I get mad when you come home wasted, Brittany, and come home into the room when I'm sleeping. That's when I get mad at you. I love Jax, but I literally try to be positive and happy, she says in a talking head. And Jax, a lot of the times, moody and negative. I've never seen that before. I've never seen that before. I've got tequila I'm bringing, Jax. God forbid you forget the tequila. Like those little, those little, God forbid you forget the fucking tequila. God forbid. Let her have a good time, Jax. And she says in the talking head, a lot of times I feel like we balance out in a way, but other times I'm like, I got to get out of here. You do got to get out of here. Run, Brittany. I got to do something fun. Love you guys. Bye. Love you. Mean it. Janet grabs her. This Jax ticks me off so badly. Yeah. Don't forget the fucking tequila. Come on, man. We've seen you like, I'm the number one guy in this group. We've seen you at your worst. Anyways, Brittany's like already gone. And he's like, have fun. Anyways, Janet's already looked up the place they're going to on Zillow. 
and it's $25,000 a month. And she says, anytime I get an address, the first thing I do, I put in a Zillow and give myself a little house tour. I know exactly how much everyone has paid for their houses when they last sold, you know, how much they pay in taxes each year. Jan Janet is the operator, man. She does know shit. She knows shit about us all. A lot. I mean, like little, I mean, that's interesting. It's, it's interesting. Anyway, now we're at Nia, uh, the rental we're there and Michelle gets there. It is beautiful. And I gotta say, Nia is just, Nia has a voice. This is the only thing I would say. Like Nia is an angel, but Nia kind of has, there's a little bit of a, the artist formerly known as Raquel voice. Like I am immersed in my family life all day, every day. There's like this lightness uh, because it's hard. It's like, it's, there's a throaty thing happening. Do you know what I'm saying? Anyways, Jasmine gets there. Everybody's just the view. My God, the view. I've never seen an ocean before the view. So it's nice, but they're going to do a painting thing. They're going to do a sip and see like a little sip and paint thing. Just like Katie Maloney did with her date with that young girl a couple weeks ago in Vanderpump. What is it with the, the painting? Anyways, Janet in the car with Brittany is like, I, I think Kristen is okay with Michelle, but they're not great. I want to see Kristen come in with calm, peaceful vibes, drama free. And Brittany's eating Cheetos during this. And Brittany's like, please, Lord, baby Jesus, little baby Jesus, please come on. Let it be peaceful. I need a fun girls night. Uh, funky music plays. And we get Isabella three years old on Jess. Jesse's carrying his daughter. And, uh, Jesse seems like a good dad. She's like, you can be on best behavior, can't you, Isabella? And Jax is like, are you hungry, Isabella? You want to go swim? And Isabella's like hiding from Jax. Yeah, go play with some toys. Yeah, you know where the toy room is. Anyways, Jesse's like, are you going to cook up some barbecue like a man, Jax? Now, Jason gets in there, Janet's husband, Kristen, and uh, Luke's friend, and Luke get there, and... <laughs> Also, Zach gets there and Jesse's making burgers like a man. We see a lot of Coors Light. And then we flash back to uh, we go over to Brittany and she's like, I got a text from Jax. He says, get um, have fun. Get drunk. Be careful. We love you. All right. We can hear it right now. We got it in writing. He cannot be mad at me tomorrow morning. And Jen's like, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. These guys are so hypocritical all the time. Double standards. It's so annoying because, like, the other day, I was not feeling good. And Jack's like, kept, like, making it worse. We flash back to nine days ago. And it's outside. This scene shocked me. It's nine days ago. Brittany, like, they're out in the back. And Brittany's like, why are you shaking your head at me, Jax? And he goes, you know better. You know better. My God, Jax, I can't help it if I don't feel good. Stop fucking drinking. You want to have more kids? Act like a mom. Like, what the fuck? What the holy hell are we? I mean, that's wild for Jax to say to us. Like, I mean, that was really gross. Now, listen, if she's out there doing this every night, every day, sure. But like, I mean, like, act like a fucking mom. What are you kidding me? Why are you shaking your head at me? I didn't poop on no stingrays. Why? Like that was so infuriating, but I also love Brittany talking to Janet and almost kind of like, you ever heard of women's liberation? You, Hey, you ever hear this thing? Women can vote now. You ever, these guys, they can be so hypocritical. Hey, <laughs> you know what's funny about my, husband? I also like that. She's like, these men can be so hypocritical. Janet seems like he's, she's married to a very level headed guy. Like Jason seems like it makes a lot of sense. Um, the whole time Janet and Brittany are eating in the car, but really like, you know, he actually, Jax goes out way more than I do. I don't even care. I'm like, no, you know, he comes home like drunk or whatever, but if I do it, it's the worst thing in the world. And Janet's like, he gets like hangover days, but you don't. And Janet goes, Jax can be a hypocrite with all that stuff. Yeah. It's like starting to upset me a lot. Janet and talking, I goes, sometimes I get a little concerned about for Brittany, but at the same time, she's married to Jax Taylor. You know, I mean, <laughs> like kind of like, that's what you signed. Listen, there's so much proof of who Jax has been. You know, even if you believe in Jax, you can't step away from all of the, just the footage, roll the tapes, you know, receipts, timeline, proof. It's all there. So it's interesting when Britney kind of wakes up to these things. So I do, I'm like there for the Britney awakening. I'm for the Britney Renaissance. I like, the, yeah, come out, girl. Like, come out of that like area and see. I'm glad you're finally seeing. Yeah, you don't deserve to be treated like that. Period. End of story. 
Uh, so they pull up to the house. She's like, oh, this is so pretty. Oh, my God, you guys. Oh, man. This is like uh, waiting to exhale. They should have one of those. They, like, this is like the craft. I want, I want like, Ouija board to be brought out. Anyways, Brittany's already like, party's here. Party's here. She's already dancing around with drinks. I mean, Brittany does like to get crunk. You know she knows her way around a tailgate party. You know? Dodie gets there. And you can tell Michelle's already kind of like, uh, and Dodie's like, I just felt so sick this morning. And I ate Luke was literally like, is it morning sickness? Will you just go pee on a stick, please? And I'm like, sure. And I do it. And I'm not pregnant. She says the test was negative in a talking head, but it's way too early to even know. I still might be pregnant. And then Michelle goes, please don't have a kid because we don't need more of you around. Michelle, you're five episodes into a reality show. That's hitting a little below the belt. And if you're going to say it, say it with your whole chest. You say things kind of like in this week, man, like, I just don't think we need any more of her around. Like, holy hell. What did Christian do? Like, that's why I know, like, Christian knows something horrid. Because for you to say that about Christian potentially having a child, that's brutal. I mean, that's like, that's hurtful. And I don't even have a relationship with you guys. That is hurtful. And also it's very sad because we know that Kristen does get pregnant and that they do lose the baby. So that really does, that's, it saddens me anyway. So everybody's doing good because the mean things are only said in talking heads. They're doing a tour of the place. The water does look great. We meet Nia's friend, Tammy, host of the sip and paint. <laughs> she goes, just so you guys know, I'm something I'm really excited for us to all do together, sip and paint and bond and have a good time and, and wind. Everybody's like, let's do it. Yeah, fun, good times. Brittany does seem to like just want to cut loose. Anyways, they sit down to this beautiful lunch outside. And the lady's like, the objective of today is you don't have to make a butterfly, but think about an intention for your painting and what you want it to grow into. What are those goals? Who are you? What does that look like? What does that person feel like? My God, I just, I don't know. I could just draw a stick figure. Like what? This already sounds like work. Janet goes, my intention is to heal and to laugh today. And Brittany's like, you should do a smiley face. Michelle, what's your intention? And Michelle's like, that's a hard question. This has probably been one of my hardest years. Uh, I have so many words for my intentions. Quentin Tarantino, Michael Bay. No, but I guess the first one is going to be love. She says to love myself to love my family, to hate Kristen Doty, to love everybody in my life, except for Kristen Doty. I love that. And Brittany goes, well, I love you, Michelle. I do, I do, you little boo. And, you know, girl power all around the table. And Doty's like, I, my intention for this day specifically is peace. Because I feel like there's been issues and frustrations and lack of trust. And they're talking to her, she's like, I think my biggest thing is that can we all be a little more empathetic? You know? <laughs> and everybody at the table goes, huh? And she goes, that's what I try to lead with. Me as Chris and Doty. I cannot help but feel every single person's feelings when I'm in a room. And then I take it home with me, you know? Mm -hmm. And everybody's like, mm-hmm. And they're talking to her, she goes, it is so hard to be an empath. And then we do a flashback of Doty's like, suck a dick. We're going to shove this up his ass. Tom Sandoval's. I want to fix everyone's problem. And we have this montage of her fighting with Sandoval and her drunks falling over. She goes, I am a good person. And Brittany goes in a talking head. She's like, what? What? And Jasmine's like, empath? Really? Girl, really? I don't think so. Janet goes, I'm wondering if she knows like the definition of an empath. And everybody's kind of laughing to themselves at the table. <laughs> like everybody's kind of, but listen, it is a heavy burden to carry the Christian Doty mantle. It's, it's a heavy, like she is, she's a guru. Like I said, anyways, Nia says, I keep saying I'm fine. I'm fine, but I'm not fine. Talking about like, you know, be having a newborn. She's like, I keep going. Like, I keep thinking it's going to go away, but it's not going away. And like, she's like, painting of the same. She's like, it's two months postpartum. I'm really fresh. I'm struggling so much. I didn't really have any baby blues after Asher, our first child. She tells the girls I'm very positive. So I feel like I'm just feeling this way, but it's not forever. But then like every once in a while I, I get like, am I just going to be sad? You know? And she starts crying and I'm talking to her. She's like, I feel like what I'm experiencing is hard for me to put exact words to. It's like, just like a wave. 
It just feels like it comes out of nowhere and covers me and then like slowly kind of dissipates sometimes. And she tells the girls, it's like a lot. It's frustrating because like it's my brain and my emotions are like separate. And like my brain is like, this is not you. Like you're fine. Then my emotions are like, nope, you're sad. And she's like, I don't want to feel that way. The producer goes, is, is it like a reaction to having children and the family and the love? And then is it completely an adverse reaction to that? And Nia's like, takes the question in and she goes, can we pause for a second? Like, can we pause for a second? Like she breaks down even at the question. She's like, I just got to check my phone. Ah, oh my God. I see how the babies are doing while we're pausing. Whoa. But she goes, you guys really, you ladies really make me feel comfortable to share. And it's hard because I don't talk to anybody about it really. Um, Listen, you know, I think hers is one of the realest stories we have in this TV show. And so sometimes when we joke about like, I mean, it's like the Dodie and the Janet and all of this stuff, like it's real, but that is real. That is real opening up. And I, you know, how she speaks about postpartum and depression, that's it. Exactly. It's like a wave. It's like this wave and your mind, your talent, like you're so, and you're so ashamed too at times because you know, you shouldn't, feel this way like it's 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 so frustrating so maddening to not be able to like sometimes pull your shit together and and i i found her scenes the most moving out of this week's episode and i just so happy she shared that because i imagine that's you know and i i have no um you know i have no uh no knowledge of what it's like to be a mom or will ever have knowledge of what it's like to have a child and to have your body go through that and to have the first one be, you know, relatively easy and to have this one not, which has got to be such a huge shock to her. Um, so I just want the the best for her, like her and her and Danny, man, what a, it just seems like I, I truly it's, it's refreshing to root for a couple on one of these reality shows, if that makes sense. Um, well, Brittany's like, listen, I get it. You got a son under two. You're going through a lot, you know? And Michelle goes, you're also doing the right thing. You're outdoors. You're with friends. You're painting horrible paintings. And then Kristen goes, you know, it's okay to not be okay. I'm an empath. <laughs> and then he's like, I'm just keeping it together. I'm just keeping it together. Um, So we come back from break. We're back with the boys. The grill's fired up. Men being men. Saturday's for the boys. Jason's in the pool with a Coors Light. Cruz is swimming with his floaties on. Burgers, dogs. Dan, you know, uh, Jesse's like, Isabella, do you want a hot dog? Are you ready for a hot dog? All right. All right. Anyways, Jax is like, that meat's been out laying out there for a while, but I'm still going to eat it because I'm a man. And uh, we found out from the guys that Daniel is not there because, you know, Nia, his wife is with the, with the girls and he has the kids. And I guess the AC went out. So we see a FaceTime call with the guys. He's like, it's 86 degrees in my house. Help me help. He's like, the AC went out, bro. I got, I got three under two. It's 89 degrees. This is a code red. I cannot be over there right now. I'm sorry. I can't make it. I got three under two over here. I'm not sleeping. Jax is like, I can only imagine. For people that don't know what the valley is, it's a valley. Thank you, Jax. Heat sits in the valley. Zach goes, it's hot as balls in the valley. And Jesse's like, I will never live in the valley. Ugh. I like Jax explaining things like, it's a valley. Heat collects. Anyways, Jesse starts ripping on his wife. She goes, uh, when Isabella, our daughter, is with Michelle, she's a wild child. But when she's with me, it's amazing. Disaster with my horrible wife amazing with me complete chaos with wife amazing with me <laughs> so we we go back to the beach things are getting crunk with the paint party and uh we you know we see their art it looks very just like flowery a lot of you know female vibes they're taking pictures they're putting all the paintings together i mean this is a lot of picasso kind of stuff anyways michelle and Brittany are talking She's like, Brittany's like, how are you feeling? And Michelle goes, Jesse goes through his like patches of trying, but I don't know if it's 100% sincere. He's a very sincere guy. And Brittany's like, but if you don't feel happy in this relationship, like at all. And Jesse, Michelle goes, I'm more unhappy than happy. 
how long have you been feeling like this? Basically since Isabella was born. And she kind of laughs as she says it. So three years. When Isabella was born, she shares in a talking head was everything was closed because of COVID. So Jesse was very hands on and then everything opened and he just kind of left. And I do have resentment, she says. It's hard to swallow that I felt so alone for so long. We drifted apart. I seriously see him trying and I'm just holding back, she tells Brittany. I don't know what it is in me. I think it's just been three years is a long time. Yeah. Is that normal, Brittany? We cut back to the guys and just Jesse Lally's like, it's all superficial issue. If you was like about a year ago, she applied for an apartment and basically told me she was leaving. Everybody's like, Zoiks, what? Like, that's huge. And the talking head goes, I was a little blindsided by it. I didn't see it coming at all. But after talking about it for a couple of hours and uh, sort of asking for a second chance and asking her what she wanted to focus on, we decided to give it a second chance. So my best option at this point is, he tells the bros, just do what I can to give her space to find what she needs to find. She, she went out to try to find an apartment, dude. Back to the girls. Michelle goes, I don't know if we can get back to the way things were before Isabella, but I'm kind of like re-feeling the way I felt before. Like the way you felt like a year ago, whenever you were like actually thinking about leaving. Now you're thinking about again with the cameras up? Really? Oh my God, right now? If you don't feel like he's your best friend, like you're number one, like, and she goes, no, immediately. And she goes, I do think the constant fighting and bickering and not smiling, I think it's unhealthy for our daughter. She's right. And so sometimes I think like it would be better off that she would see two happy, good friends. I, could, I don't even think you guys would be good friends, but she says, yeah, that would be better than us together. Unhappy. She goes, there are times that I'm like, I see him with Isabella and he's an amazing father. He is. It looks like, but us together, poo poo caca. I don't know. And back to the guys, like, well, maybe Jesse goes, well, maybe if I got an eight pack, maybe she'd be a little more attracted to me. And this is where it gets good. This is where the guys, Jax is like, well, Michelle is hanging out with bleep right now. So I say she's, that's a one up or big time. And then, and then they're all like, they all know about it. Jason's like, is bleep in Malibu right now? <laughs> they're all laughing. Like is bleep, bleep. Bleep. And people are swearing it's Tarantino, but I think it's Michael Bay because the eight pack comment, I guess that would be the thing of like an eight pack would one up Quentin Tarantino, even though he's a big director, but I don't know. It, it could go so many different ways. And these guys, they bleeped it out so well and they even bleeped out their mouths. So we, that's how, that's how big of a seat. What if it's like Steven Spielberg? What if it's, what if it's Greta Gerwig? What if it's Steven Spielberg? Uh, what if it's George Lucas? What if it's Spike Lee? What if, I'm just now I'm just trying to think of directors, just directors. I mean, <laughs> this. I mean, this is messed around. They're all laughing, and Jesse's just sitting there, like just taking it in. You're like, oh bleep, yeah, oh bleep, is bleep in Malibu? Is is bleep, 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 bleep? How dare you people keep this from us? How dare you creators of the valley keep this? They probably don't want to be. They don't want to be sued. And Zach goes. He loves Chateau, though. And Jesse goes, Chateau Marmont is at the very end of my shoot. I love going down there. Michelle always claims that she doesn't know who famous people are, but she was going out with, what's that director? Bleep. She was going out with him for like a couple of days straight, Jack says in a talking head. She goes to the Chateau every day. She walks down from her house, and she just so happened to have met him at the pool, and they got along. They were talking. And Jesse goes, she was with him for like the entire night. They had a dinner the other night with a famous actor. Jack goes, and then it turned out another day and another day. Like, you don't think this is peculiar? And so people are saying that it's Tarantino because Brad Pitt, Tarantino went out to dinner with Brad Pitt and that was the other act. See, but I don't know. This is all speculation. If you are a cast member of the Valley and you are listening to me right now, you can text me from a, uh, you can block your number and text me who this is. Please. I must know. It is my birthday next week, and I must know for my birthday. But even uh, Jason, he, she's like, are you uh, weird with uh, her hanging out with bleep for like extended periods of time? And he goes, I told her, hike up her skirt and drop her blouse. Yeah, do whatever you have to do. Jackson goes, I know she's a real estate agent too, so this is a potential customer. Jesse doesn't seem too bothered by it, but uh, I don't know whether I believe him or not. And Jesse goes, and I think I wrote it in a text message, though, forever. And Zach's like, there is proof. 
Jesse's MO is when he's uncomfortable with situations, he turns it into a joke. And then Lou, by the way, Jax, you do that too. And then Luke goes, I don't know um, a lot about the situation, but um, some of us might not be super comfortable eight or nine hours alone with a guy that's like super famous and, um, you know, wealthy. And, and Jesse just looks at Luke like, what are you new here? And he goes, I think when you're secure enough in a relationship with yourself and you trust Michelle's not going to do anything, if she does something, that's on her. You know what I mean? And then I get to tell Isabella, our daughter, for the next 40 years that her mom fucked everything up. And he looks maniacal, full of joy. Like, he's like, I, that almost is better than the marriage for him. That I, like, listen, the marriage would be great, staying and singing together. But you know what? It also would be amazing to, like, talk shit about Michelle for the rest of our life to our daughter. That sounds good, too. But I like Luke kind of like, hey, can I make a real quick comment? Isn't it kind of weird? And then just goes, when you're secure in your marriage and you're like, why would you be secure in your marriage? She literally told you a year ago she had an apartment picked out. She probably had a security deposit down. And uh, Luke in a talking head goes, I know Jesse and Michelle's relationship isn't the best, um, but I'm also holding a secret that can just end everything. And the producer's like, uh, what did you say? Things um, I don't. I don't know how to say I've never been on a reality show before Dodie tried to coach me on this. And he's like, just nervous. Would you, would you, would you, would you go through with it? If she made a mistake, he asked Jesse, you know, and is that, would you try to remedy it as much as you love her? And he's like, no, it's the one straw. I'll remedy anything else, but cheating. Jesse says cheating. And Luke in a talking head again goes, um, I, I can't really say, I just, I can't say what I really want to say. Kristen will withhold sex from me. She promised me, but like, but I mean, I literally, I'm so confused. I don't know if Kristen wants me to say or not. I'm so good. Like you can tell Luke is like, am I supposed, is this my talking head moment where I'm supposed to like rat, rat somebody out? I've never done this before. Help me, help me. This poor Luke, he's getting red face. He's like itching. It is so wild. So right there, we know that something, we know that Michelle cheated and we know Kristen knows that Kristen told Luke, bango, bingo, bungo. And that's what we're going to see the fight for next week. But holy moly, mother of God. Jesse goes, you know, I let her do whatever she wants and trust that she can make the right decision. And Luke's just looking at him. Luke's just looking at him in the pool. Just boys being boys, eating hot dogs, hamburgers, talking about the love of a good woman. Never thinking in a million years that your wife that hates you currently that tried to move out last year would ever, ever cheat on you. Whoo, we got a show, baby. The valley is hot, hot, hot. Back over to Jackson Brittany's house. Boy's still drinking in the pool. And Isabella comes to her dad and goes, I drank your margarita. And Jesse's like, don't tell, don't tell mommy about that though. Okay. Don't tell. She's like, boys, I got to get her home. She needs a nap. She's hammered. All right, fellas. By the way, Jax is just sitting with his legs in the pool, just staring off into space, just disassociating. Anyways, we go back to the girls. It's like game time. Let's do this game time. Get the booze. Let's do this. All right. Nia's pumping. Okay. Yeah, I want y'all pick up at least five per person. Little, uh, these little cubes, right? Truth or dare on them. These are Jenga. We're going to do Jenga with girl Jenga. And Brittany's like, woo, woo, let's do it. What is the most embarrassing thing you've done on a date is Brittany's. And Brittany's like, oh my gosh, what is the most? Oh, the first time I ever met Jax's parents. They had a boat in Florida. The boat is all out in the water, right? They, they're all the stingrays all over the floor. It's like stingray I don't know, some crazy shit. Real clear water, right? There was not a restroom on this boat. So my tummy got a little rumbly. They did. It did. There was nothing I could do. So instead of like going on the boat, I had to go in the water and I had to walk like a crab. And they're like, no. And I'm talking to like, Jax was like walking behind me like three feet away because I was scared. <laughs> because... There was a bunch of stingrays out. I'm like, oh my God, the stingrays going to eat my poop. <laughs> and I like pulled my bathing suit aside. I was just like, oh, they're like, I don't want to know any of the details. Uh, I don't even know if his parents knew. They're going to know now. Uh, Jack doesn't even talk to his mom still. I don't know. Can you imagine that clear water? Just a bunch of Britney poop, just potentially killing stingrays. That's not good for wildlife. <laughs> Brittany. <laughs> Brittany, salt of the earth, man, admitting that you, I love it. Like, honestly, but you know, Jax was like, act like a woman, right? <laughs> you know, Jax was like, act like a, a woman doesn't poop in the ocean. That's a man's job. 
Hell, uh, act like a fucking girlfriend right now. How dare you poop in front of my angelic parents? You pull your swimsuit back over your giant. Let's go. You gonna wipe even? Come on. <laughs> Janet points out that Michelle goes out of the lobby to poop when she's on the vacation. And Michelle goes, I don't even say that word. I don't even say that word. And they're like, you don't poop in front of Jesse, Michelle? And, and Michelle's like, no, that's disgusting. Keep it to yourself. That's why doors were created. Maybe that's why I'm not having a lot of sex right now, Brittany says. And then she like stares in his face like, holy shit, maybe that is why we're not having sex right now. Uh, Janet's question is, describe the last sex you had. And Janet's like, the last sex I had was on Saturday. And she says it was missionary sex and we did it for 15 minutes. Once again, more than I need to know. They both finished and it was great. She says, and Brittany's like, last time I had sex, woo, probably like a month and a half ago at least. And he's like a month and a half. They're married. They have, I, I, well, I, I'm married and I have kids and I doing it more than her. That's why you got three kids. Brittany says they're all laughing. Kristen goes, my girl needs to get laid in a talking head. I sort of feel bad really, but that I'm not in a place right now. I'm an empath. Jasmine goes, Brittany's not having sex in a month. Something's going on over there. Nia says, in long relationships, sometimes you got to keep it interesting. And Kristen's like, I don't know. Try dating a 32-year-old. Because Luke is laying it down. It is a constant flood. He needs to make me feel like I'm still attractive, but I don't feel like it right now. And they're like, have you told him that? He knows. He knows. It's been a whole thing. And then he puts me down. I'm going to cry right now. He calls me poop stingray. He does. In a talking ad, Brittany's like, Jax can be really hard on me. He kind of puts me down a lot, whether it's about if I go out and have a girl's night and don't feel good the next day or the way I look. And he's like, are you okay talking about this, Brittany? He's like, yeah, yeah, no. Your partner's supposed to lift you up and make you feel good about yourself. And I feel like he's doing the opposite to me right now. And that really sucks because I've been in his corner through all this shit he put me through. I've always stuck up for him. I always believed in him. And I just be like, I don't get the same thing in return. And in the scene, you go, Jax will go and freak out if he knows I'm talking about our sex life. <laughs> I would imagine Jack's like, um, you know, he know, like, <laughs> you're welcome back to reality. But I mean, listen, everything that Brittany's saying is completely correct. Is compl like, she's dead on right, man. Like, I, I, I really feel for Brittany. And I got to tell you, I'm glad, I'm glad that she made the decision to like, take some space. I still think it's wild that Jax made her leave and get an Airbnb. And just think about the amount of money that they're wasting doing that. Like Jax needs to go shack up with Sandoval for a while. Like live in that place. Anyways, Nia gets a text from Danny going like, hey, babe, the AC went out. Uh, I've got some portable ones coming. But, you know, can you come home soon? And, you know... She lets all the girls know there's the babies are screaming. He fed them, changed their diapers and birthed them, but they won't stop crying. And, you know, can you get home soon? So I'm going to sneak out early. Nia says, you guys keep hanging. I'm going to pack up my stuff and then I'll say goodbye. I feel so bad for her. But at the same time, I can completely, some people were like, oh, damn, how dare her not let her have a night out. But like, man, AC going out 86 degrees, three little ones. That can be a scary situation where you need your partner. So I, kind of understood and i think that's probably one of the another just really hard thing about being a parent that you do have to like the kids come first and that's why man what a fucking good couple like i really i i i love this <laughs> love love this this couple and but by the way nia needs this more than any of the other girls she's dealing with depression as she can't even really enjoy this night because danny's blowing up her phone because he's worried they see in the babies and he needs this night but I think, I think when it comes to this, you know, I kind of understand like he needs, he needs her, you know, anyways, she says goodbye to everybody leaves in her jammies and Brittany's like, let's keep partying. Woo woo. Pooping on stingrays. Woo. I love the way Brittany rallies though. She'll be like, my husband doesn't want to fuck me at all. Starts crying. And then she's like, let's get a tequila. Let's my stomach hurts. Let's do this. Woo. We come back from commercial and we're at a new day, baby. It is a new day in the V A L L E Y. Uh, but we're back at the Malibu rental, but a new day. Janet's cleaning everything. We see the Aveline wine laid out perfectly in front of the sink. Janet, I don't know if she still does, but used to work for Aveline wine and, uh, Aveline wine's great. Janet and Dugnet says last night was great. There was no fighting, but we still got a little dirt with the sex stuff. 
if she was like, we were having a nice, good time, nothing over the top or crazy, just like a quiet girl time. And then we see Dodie coming out in a flashback with her nipples out. She's fully naked, like an empath. And they're partying. Brittany's on Michelle shoving her big boobs in her face. You know, Janet's like dancing with her belly. She's like, I'm starting to really feel like we're able to have fun, healthy girls nights. It's 10 37 AM. Brittany waking up and she's like, Oh, you can just tell she, Oh my God. Christian forgot her sunglasses, entire wallet and her vape, which is very Christian. She already left. Uh, Christian left at six in the morning. She went to sleep immediately. And then I woke up and she was gone. So Dodie got hammered like this. Like Dodie obviously was hammered enough where she was naked dancing with the girls, probably passed out at three and then woke up at five and was like, gotta go have sex. Time to make the donuts. Like that's wild. Like Dodie, that's, she feels very one with California. She's like, this city will protect me. This state will protect me. So Brittany, they're talking about her being hung, uh, hung over and talking about potentially making Bloody Marys because Brittany wanted one. And then we hear Brittany from the other room, no alcohol. And they're talking to her, like, I don't remember any of this. I mean, tequila had taken over. I was three sheets to the wind. We see her doing cartwheels. I don't know. It was girls night. <laughs> Brittany finally comes out and she just looks like, uh, she looks just, Wow. She looks like somebody that would poop on a stingray. And she's like, sees food. And she's like, oh, uh, 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 uh. I gotta throw up y'all. Ow. So Janet's got to drive Brittany home. She's like, I'm going to have a hungover Brittany barfing. It's going to literally be like Hansel and Gretel. Instead of leaving bread comes leaving from Malibu back to the Valley. It's going to be little piles of vomit all the way. So Brittany in the ocean, it's Brittany's poop on, on land on sea. It's poop on land. It's piles of Brittany's vomit. I need some of that for my reality show museum. Everybody's leaving. We see Brittany with her head down. And Janet's like, you're going to be fine, Brittany. We're just, we're not going to stop. We're just going to go. We're going to go. So we cut back to the Valley, Danny and Nia's condo condo. They've got Asher, the 19 month old, the two babies, and uh, they're getting the AC fixed. Nicole, Nia's mother is there. And, She's watching the uh, the kids and Nia and Danny go to have a talk. And this is a really, actually, a really beautiful conversation. So they start talking about, uh, you know, Danny's like, you leave your entire family to go to Malibu. AC goes out. And Nia's like, we talk about truth or dare. It goes to Brittany. When's the last time you had sex? She says a month and a half. And Daniel's like, uh-oh. I mean, you get frustrated, Daniel, when it's been like a handful of days or more than a week. Uh, it's like way too long. Daniel's like, yep. And she's like, Nia's like, I literally can't imagine a month and a half in our relationship the rest of our lives. When it does come to the bedroom, we definitely have fun. You know, I feel like Asher was conceived and there were handcuffs in a rose. That's a kiss from a rose by seal right there. And Daniel's like, ha, 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 ha. There was a blindfold. Yes. A bl and she's like, a blindfold? Maybe ice? And Nia's like, oh my God, poor Asher's going to watch this one day. That was a talking head back in the scene. It's like, Jax doesn't make her feel desired. Obviously you do a good job of making me feel desired. And she's lactating right now. And she's like, I think it's time to feed a baby. So they go to get a baby to be fed because, you know, Michelle is uh, sorry that uh, Nia is ready. So she's like, anywho, well, I can totally relate to Brittany when she mentioned the whole still not feeling hundred percent comfortable in her body. I can relate to that with me and my body and the fact that I'm dealing with all this emotional stuff, I just like can't escape it. And he's like, yeah, it's just a lot. She says, and she starts to kind of tear up and he kind of just touches her cheek and she's wiping away a tear. And she's like, I keep saying like, Oh, I think I'm dealing with some baby blues. Like, I think it's just some blues because I don't want to like claim that. I don't want to be like, Oh, I'm depressed. Like, I don't want to say that I can't even pull it together and act like nothing's wrong. You know? And he goes, it's high functioning depression. I'm sure it is. She's like, I just know we talk about it and I try to Google it. And, you know, and I'm talking to Ed, she's like, they call it high functioning depression. So I feel like, is that what I'm experiencing? Like I can function well because I know how to be okay. Yeah, that's it. You can do things, but you just don't feel like yourself. 
Deanna goes, I'm just really sorry that you're going through this, but know that you're not alone. And I'm here with you. And I'm not going anywhere. And he smiled this. He's everything you're going through is valid. And she goes, I just want to talk to an actual counselor or a therapist that deals with postpartum. And he goes, if you need to get some professional help, there's no shame or anything that's behind it. You know what I mean? And she's like, yeah, it's just frustrating. And in talking to her, she's like, it's better for me to like, this is what I'm experiencing so that I can fix it and move through it, you know? And she's crying during this talking to her, but you know, you're going to have to, she goes, you're going to have to give me a minute. Like she's cr- like, she's like, man, this is another thing about rushing into filming, like eight weeks after you had twins. But I got to tell you, and I don't want to give too much credit to the, to a man, but I will say, I don't probably have a lot of straight man, men listening to this podcast, but I will say. That's how you, that's how you handle that, man. Your feelings are valid. I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. I'm here for you. I support you. Let's go see it. If you do whatever you need to do. And he's just sitting there next to her with a smile on his face, wiping away her tears. And I just thought it was beautiful, but I want to give the most credit to Nia. to like just being brave enough to talk about this, but man, it, it just feels like it's like a whole separate planet than some of the other casts in the Valley. You're like, this is real. Like this almost makes me believe I'm like, man, what a strong family. Like I'm going to start tearing up like Nia. I, I know this, because you compare it to Jackson, Brittany and it's just like, it's apples and oranges. It really is crazy. And I hate to say it, like, I, anyways, we come back from commercial and we're over at, uh, Jack's and Brittany's modern, no, sorry, no, we're at Kristen's apartment first. And uh, their two dogs are licking each other. They're putting together Ikea furniture in between having sex with each other, I'm sure. Then we chat over to Jesse and Michelle's house. And uh, Michelle's dancing with Isabella. She's like, you're going to get so dizzy. And she's like, I'm so drunk from the margarita still yesterday, mommy. Ah. <laughs> and then Isabella runs and goes, I'm out. I need to pee. Isabella is us all. And now it's night all of a sudden. And we go over to Janet and Jason's and they're talking about getting the humidifier and talking about what a humidifier. That's by the way, that's one of the most adult decisions you can ever make in your life is do you need a humidifier? And it's just, it looks like a real relationship. And then we go to Jackson, Brittany's house. We're sending good night to Cruz, and Jackson's like, get up there like a big boy. He's a, he does a teenager. He doesn't need us anymore. We're going to brush our, we're going to brush our teeth. Brittany is wearing the Jax Taylor, Andy Warhol shirt. And Jax is like, how important is it to even brush your teeth when you have fake teeth? The producer goes, how many teeth are fake in your house? He's all of them. Every one of my teeth. This is the moneymaker right here. This old face. I can't take them out. They're veneers. Yeah. This is all fake. Cruz is kind of crying to Brittany. Jax just like walks away. He's like, you're going to sleep in your room like a big boy. You need to lay down. And Jack's kind of sighs as he walks down. He's like, ah, oh, got to brush my teeth. And now this, he's laying on the couch. Brittany comes down after putting this son to bed. Like, I think he's going to go right to sleep. He was so tired. And Jack's like, he's got to be exhausted. His mom was gone. Well, I haven't really seen you all day. You didn't come home too nice. No, I'm not feeling good tonight today. Look at this picture Jasmine sent me. And it's like Brittany, like drunk. Yeah, you came home rough. Janet, like, you said you were coming in hot. And I said, what do you mean you're driving her home? She's like, I don't think Brittany's going to be able to drive me home. I'm like, we live a block away. There's no possible way I was going to even be able to get behind the wheel. Did you drink a lot? I just, I, I just, I don't think I ate enough or something. I don't know. I'm going to leave it better now. And Jax is like, oh, dude, are you kidding me? But you come home throwing up all over the place. Yeah, there was literally a ba- he goes, there was literally a bag of vomit in my driveway. Jax, do you still have that bag of vomit? I would love it for my reality show museum. And Brittany's kind of smiling. She's like, that's because I was sick in the car. The thing is, like, you text me and say, get drunk, have fun, be careful, we love you. And then I go and have a fun girls' night, bag of vomit. And, like, you make me feel, like, guilty for going. Having a fun. Well, I just didn't think you were going to come home puking and stuff. That doesn't have anything to do with it, Jax. I don't understand why you can't go out and have a couple drinks. Why do you have to go to the point where you have to throw up? That's exactly what you do, too. No. No. We got done here eight o'clock. Zach was like, Jax, can I hang out? And I, you know, I miss you. I went out. I was home by 10, 15. Your mom was with the baby here. She went to bed with him. I stayed up till about 12. Then we passed out. It was fine. I was asleep by 1130, Jax. 
Jax is like, oh, fuck. How do I come back? How do I make her feel bad about this? I also like that the whole time Britney's mom is there. Zach doesn't even truly have to, like, be the main. Like, you know Britney's mom is taking care of Cruz. The mom is there. It's not even Jax by himself. Jax went out after the pool party for a couple of hours. And the talking head's like, I'm a little worried because, you know, not only is she my wife, but she's a mother. Like, we need you. If you keep this up, you're going to destroy your body. There's other ways to have a good time. You ever try cocaine? No, he goes, he goes, we live in California. You can smoke a joint. You can do other things, right? You ever try H? Chase the dragon? He goes, we all talked, opened up. Jesse, Michelle, I know they're struggling a lot, Jack. She was opened up to me. Whenever I was talking about like our issues and stuff, I was like, but he's like my best friend. I love him so much. Like no matter what, you know, I know. They're, we're going to be a good team. We're a good team. She was like, I don't feel like that way about Jesse at all. Like that just made me sad. And Isabella is only a year older than Cruz, so I, I want us to be able to work on us right now, Jack. So in that one year, we're not where they are. And he goes, how deep into our sex life did you get, Brittany? Tense music. Like, well, everybody, you know, uh, went around last time they had sex. I said a month and a half ago. And Jax is like, damn it. Step up the game, Jax. It's just there's been a lot going on. That's not an excuse, Jax. Step up your game. And he's like, you can at least try a little bit. Make me feel sexy or something. She's wearing a Jax t-shirt right now. He goes, every time I go to bed, I'm like out. I'm out. I'm just conked. I'm blowing leaves all day. It doesn't feel like you're attracted to me or something. Of course I'm attracted to you. I know, but I need physical touch. I need words of affirmation. I need love language. He goes, I do all that stuff. Are you kidding me? I always say good stuff to you. I always say that's a good dumper. I do. I say good dumper, huge boobs. I like your face. I say stuff. You know, you smell like a woman. You know, I've said I've said things before. Are you kidding me, Brittany? Don't put this on me. But she's like, continues. like after having the baby with all my body changing so much and everything, you know, I'm just a little self-conscious. I just really want you to make me feel beautiful. And Jackson's yawning goes, I agree. I agree. I'm stressed out. Stressed out with a lot of things. A lot of leaves in the yard. And he goes, when you're messed up up here in the head, it's hard to get hard down there. You know what I'm saying? No pun intended. Actually, pun intended, actually. I know you're stressed and you get worked up about the small things and then put all that anxiety on me. And then I start freaking out. You know what I mean? He goes, because I'm OCD and I overthink and in my mind, I can't shut it off. I deal with that as well, Jax. But like, I'm trying to take it out, not take it out on you. And he goes, we're at an impasse. And I'm talking to him, he goes, the reason I'm so stressed out right now is because I've been at the bottom. I know what it's like to sit around. Wait for the phone to ring for a long time. Lisa Vanderpump never called me. Now I've got too much going on. Now that's becoming a problem. You can't fucking win. I can't win. I try to make everybody fucking happy and it's so hard. <laughs> like literally we're in a scene where Brittany's like, you're not making me happy. And he goes, I'm trying to make everybody happy. He goes, I just want you to be able to come talk to me and come to me. And like, let's go through this. I love you to pieces. He's like, I love you too. We ain't going nowhere. We're thick as thieves. He goes, that D word does not exist in my family. No, we're not going to do that. We don't do that. Okay, so date night, sexy time, ass stuff. And he goes, a month? Has it really been that long? It's been a month and a half. He goes, Jesus, our sexy time is going to like last two minutes. (laughs) And they're laughing. (laughs) He goes, should we try some butt stuff? Oh, my God, Jax Taylor. Oh, my God, you can't get pregnant that way. Our sexy time is going to last two minutes. (laughs) And so. The final scene after commercial is at Jesse and Michelle. And this is a very dark scene where she's folding the baby's clothes. They're talking about listing appointments. And Michelle goes, how was last night, Jesse? He goes, just a bunch of dudes at the pool drinking beers and talking about their feelings. We flash back to, is Michelle still hanging out with beep? That's a big one up or big time. Jax was asking about therapy. Um, but Jax asked me, he was like, he was really, you know, he's like, for my own well-being, I want to know how it's going. And I think I was just about as honest as I could be. And we flash back to him saying that he trusts Michelle, you know, and if, if she, she does something, I'll badmouth her to Isabella for the next 40 years. And Michelle's like, really? He's like, well, you know, Jax asked, and I was like, it's kind of chaos. I just kind of just like threw it all out. And Michelle just kind of has this weird smile 
like, and she's like, Barry, Jesse of you. Well, I learned a lot yesterday being with the girls and I think everybody opened up about themselves. Do you know Brittany pooped on a stingray? She goes, no. And Brittany, she really opened up about their relationship. And she was basically saying like, you know, we barely sleep with each other. They're like brother and sister, she tells Jesse. And everything she was saying, like, I was kind of agreeing with her. I was like, well, that's how me and Jesse are. And Jesse's like, hmm. Brittany kind of pulled me aside and was like, hey, I'm here for you. Do you want to talk further? And I opened up to her and I said things that I never really said out loud before. Mm, he's like, uh-huh. Like what? What did you say? And she's like tearing up. It's like, I mean, I, it's clear that I'm not exactly happy. I told her about your extremely small micro penis. I told her that I don't know exactly what to do with our relationship. And therefore it makes me unhappy as a person. That's a very clear statement right there. And Jesse's just like, you know, talking to goes, I made a vow and I'm going to fight for that vow for Michelle, for my family, for Isabella to keep us as a whole. There's always a way through it. You could actually start working on your own behavior and actually being a good person to her. That could be like, it's not just that, like, I will stay no matter what, like maybe change your own behavior. And it already seems like it's too late anyways. But Jesse goes, we're spending all the money, all this time and this commitment on therapy. Do you want it to work or do you not want it to work? And she goes, I know that you want to make it work. And I know that you want to be with me, but I don't necessarily know how I feel. Oh, she says, I'm talking that Jesse and I have been in a bad place for so long and all the fighting is exhausting. And I don't know if this is what I want for the rest of my life. Yeah. Right. He goes, I want us to go back to the things that we like to do before. And, and experience together raising Isabella. And you can tell this is not what she wants to hear. She wants him to say, yes, let's split. And he goes, I think I want to do this as a team. Wrong answer, buddy. And he goes, that's why I'm here doing what I have to do. Everybody has teared up on the valley thus far. He goes, I know I want it to work. He's so serious. He pulls off his backward baseball cap for a second and reapplies it. And he's crying and she's not anything. She's just staring blankly. She goes, I know that you're not in a place that you can't answer that right now. And she goes, I'm going to try, but I can't promise anything. Oof. Oof. The song goes, sometimes we need help. Ah. In a talking head, she says, it's very weird that we are that couple because when we got married, flashback to 2018 pictures, when you get married, you stay married and things happen. Oof. I see you try so hard. It breaks my heart is the song. And he goes, do you want a hug? And she kind of smiles. She goes, he goes, let's hug it out. Weirdo. I'm going to be there for you. And they awkwardly hug. It's like, you smell like Quentin Tarantino. Sometimes we need help. Next time on the Valley. And this was a big one. We see like this party happening. Brittany's like, go mama, go. Y'all right. Jax is talking to uh, so Jasmine saying she has been texting other men, men. Michelle has been texting other men. And Jesse goes, if you bring out any skeletons that I don't already know about my wife, I will fucking bury you to Chris and Doty. And then Luke gets in the face and then we're fighting in a hallway and Luke's like, your problems with your wife, dude. And Michelle's walking away. It looks so intense. You guys, we did it. We made it to the end of an extra long episode. Who knows if that was any good or not, but you guys, we made it have the best time listening to all 80 of Taylor Swift's tracks that she released. I really do hope you have a great weekend. Um, drink something good, eat something great. Tell people you love them. Even if it hurts, you know, even if you don't want to, it's like good to do it. Um, spend some time by yourself, uh, read something, read something, watch something, watch a fictional show, not reality. Listen to good music, go on a walk, all of that good stuff. And then meet me here bright and early on Monday for a new pop culture roundup. We will be doing a summer house recap over on the Patreon tomorrow. I think Kate Legaco is going to join me over there and you can have access to the Patreon live. We did patreon.com forward slash so bad. It's good. Please rate this podcast five stars on Apple podcasts and Spotify and have a blessed weekend. Oh. We're not any of the cast members of the Valley, so we're good. Uh, except for Daniel and Daniel and Nia. I love those guys. Okay, bye.